Welcome to Mom and Mind. This is a podcast all about perinatal mental health and wellness related to conception, pregnancy, birth, loss, postpartum, and new parenthood. But more than that, we aim to deepen our truths, shed light on real issues, speak about our pain, feel understood, and offer a path to healing. We raise the volume on these topics in hopes that someday everyone will have the support and information that they deserve before they need it. Please note this podcast is not a replacement for treatment by a professional or professional training. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Mom and Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Kat. Today, we're going to be taking a look at postpartum depression from a different perspective. We're talking with Katie Flores, and she is a certified holistic health coach and a postpartum depression survivor. In her work, she provides a natural approach for moms who are struggling with postpartum depression. She is an integrative nutrition health coach, mother, and advocate, and she's discovered that postpartum depression can happen based on a variety of circumstances, and she believes the missing factor that most doctors overlook is that it can be treated nutritionally, and postpartum depression is a symptom, not the final answer. So we're going to hear a little bit about her personal story and her perspectives on how to help and support perinatal women on their journey to health. Let's welcome Katie. Welcome, Katie. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited because we've, um, you know, been following each other on social media a little bit, and it's nice to finally get to really talk with you and share the work that you do with our audience. And I know you have your own personal story, so maybe start there. Okay. Well, it started actually before I got pregnant. Um, I unknowingly had depression then. Um, I, I don't even know how long it went on. Um, I'm sure it was years, um, but it was very mild. But it showed up in ways like isolating myself, um, you know, being invited to events here and there and just making excuses and not going and just lack of motivation, doing nothing on the weekends and just saying, well, it's just because I work so hard Um, during the week. I need my rest. And it's true. But, you know, compared to how I was and being active all the time, it was just it was different. And my husband had it as well. So the fact that we were both going through it made us oblivious to how the other was acting differently. So then in May 2013, Mother's Day, we unexpectedly found out that we were expecting. We were (laughs) quite surprised, but it didn't take us long to really warm up to the fact. And we got really excited about it. You know, we started doing the plans. We were living in an apartment. We finally were like, okay, we need to settle down. We need to get a house and, and all of these things. And then in June, so at 11 weeks, I had miscarried. And it just, mm-hmm. it broke both of our hearts. And I could probably cry and I don't want to talk about it too much. But it did cause me some anxiety for the next pregnancy. So after I miscarried, it was just a whole week from hell and I'm not going to go into it, but the house that we um, put an offer on and was accepted, everything just fell through. And we, we were living in Houston at the time and it was kind of, it was more like a means to an end. We had moved there because of his job. Mm. And so you know, we, we needed it. And it, it, he was able to um, advance in his career for it. So I, I mean, I don't regret it in any way, shape or form. But, you know, we were both not happy. So after all that happened, we were like, you know what, this is a sign that we need to get out of here. And so (laughs) everything happens so quickly. And within a month, Mm -hmm. we were ready to move to Georgia. Um, I just knew that I needed to be around nature, the mountains and the trees and and all that. And Houston just wasn't that for me personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, traffic, it's just so busy. And I'm a really sensitive person. So we moved. We moved to Georgia 
partly because it was close to family. My mom, my dad, cousins, aunts and uncles, they live, you know, three hours from um, where we are now. And I just pictured my my kids, you know, playing and being close with their cousins and aunts and uncles. Right. So we moved to a, a new state with no friends. And yes, family was close, but not really that close. You know, they're going to have to call before they, they right. head over. Right. So about a, a couple weeks after we had moved, we found out we were expecting. Oh, wow. Which was, yeah, it was so exciting, but I definitely, definitely had anxiety that first trimester, especially those first 11 weeks. But she is now here with us today. She's three and a half now, which is crazy to think. But she was born in June 2014. And that first night, we just, we just were both on such this natural high, you know, like, oh my God, we, I can't believe we just did that. You know, it's such a powerful thing. And Mm -hmm. I don't think men truly understand what a woman's body goes through (laughs) when they give birth. She slept well the first night, obviously, because she's so tired. But the second night was very different. (laughs) You know, it was the start of sleep issues. She was very gassy and it just kind of continued on. Um, She just always seemed uncomfortable. She lost weight the first week, which which can be common. Um, And she had jaundice. So all of these things were contributing to the thoughts that I had of being an inadequate mom and unworthy Mm -hmm. of being a mom. I was just like... I felt like I was to blame for all of this. Like I could have prevented it somehow. Mm -hmm. And she went on, she suffered with acid reflux. Um, She was never colicky, but like I, I needed that peace and quiet when she slept because she was so fussy. Um, Mm -hmm. I had, I had absolutely no breaks the first year of her life. You know, my family lived you know, three hours away, they couldn't drop by whenever. And I had no friends. My husband worked 12 to 14 hour days. So it's a long, it's a long day for him too. And, you know, because she was such a horrible sleeper, I ended up co-sleeping with her for naps and bedtime, like everything. So when I say I didn't have a break, I literally did not have a break. Uh Uh-huh. You were with her all the time. All the time. And like, you know, people say, baby, try and carry her and all of these things. And nothing. I'm telling you, nothing worked. And it's so Mm -hmm. ironic because, you know, when you don't have kids, you're so, um, you give all the advice. (laughs) And I remember, I remember reading all the books and thinking I was so well equipped and she just threw me for a loop. Yeah. Totally threw me for a loop. That's so hard. So, and That's I so and I always I always laugh because moms would tell me, you know, oh my gosh, it was so rough last night. I woke up, you know, three or four times for the baby. And here I was like literally waking up every hour and a half and mm-hmm. no relief. And so no. the sleep the sleep deprivation took took a huge, huge toll on me. Um, right. I don't know why I'm getting a little emotional talking about this. It was so tough. Um, yeah, that's really hard. And f- um, finally, after a year, um, you know, we didn't have the finances to to really do this, but I joined the local Y for the childcare and just just to get some alone time. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, that, that really did help. That was, that was a huge relief. Um, unfortunately the depression, like it, it's, it was still there. And, and I remember, um, you know, later on when I was doing 
research and depression and all of this, um, always hearing that, oh, it gets better after a year. And I'm like, it's getting worse. It's yeah. getting worse. I don't see an end in sight. Yeah. It was really frustrating. Um, and, and it's funny because I always used to compare my story with other moms. And I'm like, you know, it's I really don't have it that bad. But, you know, we can't compare ourselves. We're all in different journeys and yeah, we all react differently. True. Absolutely. That's absolutely true. I mean, your your body's different than your, you know, person next to you. Everything that comes together in your body to function is going to function differently than somebody else. Yeah. So at um, when she was about a year and a half, I stopped taking prenatals just for financial reasons. I was still nursing. Um, I knew I needed to. I guess I just didn't understand. Like, I mean, I know I need vitamins, but I never <laughs> understood like, okay, what are the repercussions if I stop taking it? Which is uh -huh. ironic as a health coach, but I stopped taking it for financial reasons. And um, shortly after that, I got this like freak infection in my mouth and it caused me to be put on antibiotics. Oh, and yeah. looking back, you know, the no sleep and the antibiotics and, um, you know, taking myself off the vitamins things really started to escalate. So <laughs> the first year and a half, it was like, I felt like I was functioning well enough, mm -hmm. well enough, but it, it really got worse after those um, particular events. But yeah. the crazy thing was, I, I didn't find out I had postpartum depression until she was almost two years old. Mm. It's a long time to suffer. <sighs> It is. And, and my husband had it too. And he didn't know it either. Yeah. And there's, yeah. you know, it's so, it, there's so much confusion out there, not sure. only from the women going through it, but, you know, medical professionals too. I can't tell you how many times I've had women come to me and say that their doctor said it was, you know, all in their head or, uh, you know, that's just the stresses of motherhood. It's like, no, no. this is, this is a real this is a real thing yeah. that women are going through. Right. So, so frustrating. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. I mean, we're doing yeah. podcasts here <laughs> all on it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is an issue. Mm -hmm. So we found out we had it. And I started practicing like all these stress management techniques. Meditation never really took for me. I mean, I tried, I just, you know, if you have anxiety, <laughs> it's really hard to sit still for mm -hmm. even three minutes. It was extremely frustrating. Mm -hmm. But yeah, even with trying to do less stress management techniques and, you know, I think she was two and a half when she finally really started sleeping through the night. I was still searching for an answer because it, again, it helped, but I didn't feel normal. And right. it, it wasn't until one day, I think I was scrolling through Facebook or something, and, and an article popped up. And it, I don't even remember what, what the um, title read, but it was something along the lines of postpartum depression being a symptom and, and not like the final diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So this really piqued, <laughs> piqued my interest because I was like, this, this makes sense to me. And so through months of research and tweaking my diet and testing, I came to find out that postpartum depression was a symptom for me. And, you know, for some that could be thyroid issues. Thyroid issues are peak um, postpartum and even during pregnancy. It's, it's actually a pretty common thing. But even that, if, you know, thyroid, that's just an example. If that is something um, that you're dealing with, you can still dig deeper and question why you're even having the thyroid dysfunction. So it's crazy, but I, you know, I had to just keep, keep digging, keep searching. And I finally um, figured out the true cause of my depression. 
So from the experience that you had, um, it sounds like that really informs the kind of work that you're doing now to support moms, new moms. Yes. Um, so yeah. What kind of work are you doing? Right now, because I'm still, <laughs> I still stay at home with my three-year-old. Can't wait for her to go to school. <laughs> but um, <laughs> right now I am taking on a very limited amount of clients for one-on-one coaching. So we meet once a week, once every other week, depending on um, what feels good for them. And, you know, we really go over the symptoms that they're experiencing and really dissect like what, what is the cause of all of these symptoms? Because there's, there's a relationship between, I don't know, eczema and like, I I don't know, these are kind of, I'm just throwing this out there, like mucus in the back of your throat that you might be dealing with. Like, they're actually related. Or um, I have a friend who she's struggling with depression and has fibromyalgia. Like those surprisingly are related. So in, in the work that you do, you're kind of, as a health coach, you're kind of helping people figure out what else could be causing their experience, what their symptoms are based on asking them questions, kind of going deeper to find the root cause. Yeah. And then we really you know, dissect their diet and, you know, their surroundings and try and figure out how to get these highly nutritional foods in them that feels doable to them and that helps them to heal. Okay. So a lot of the work that you do is changing uh, nutrition. Yes. That's a huge part of it. Okay. Um, so what are the, some of the things you've seen as kind of root causes, um, for postpartum depression and and whatnot in terms of like nutrition and, and other um, things that might be going on with them. Okay. So, you know, I know as you, as a psychologist, you see a lot of um, emotional causes and that is totally true. There's, there's six of them um, that I talk about throughout, um, throughout my website and throughout um, my natural postpartum support podcasts. Um, so the first two are emotional that you would discuss with your clients. So traumatic loss, um, that's a big one and traumatic stress. So those are the two emotional ones we think of most. The other four are more physical. So you have adrenal dysfunction. Adrenal dysfunction is very common for postpartum moms. I don't want to say like the simple act of childbirth because there's nothing simple about it. It's very powerful. But by simply giving birth, your adrenals are just on overdrive. It takes, it takes a lot. It's very taxing for your body. So a lot of women go through adrenal dysfunction just by giving birth. Um, So that can be a a root cause of your um, postpartum depression. Another one is another big one. And and here's the thing. You can have more than one of these symptoms. I can tell you I've had all of these. (laughs) So, you know, I had a lot going on. I, I feel for you if you have more than one of these. Um, But this one, I probably have been dealing with most of my life. And that is um, heavy metals and toxins. So this has to do with your liver. So your liver is basically a filter. So think of like a filter in your house, you know, purifier, an air purifier. You have all of this guck getting into the filter if you don't clean it out regularly, it's just going to keep building up and then eventually it's not going to work. And that's the same for your liver. So, I mean, we have toxins everywhere. <laughs> the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, the products we use, they're everywhere. So if you're not on a regular basis, trying to like cleanse and detox your liver. And, and the, there are simple ways you can do that. But if you're not doing that, it, it can cause symptoms such as depression. Um, I mean, that's just one symptom. There is a ton of other ones. 
but it's definitely something that you would want to explore. And it's, it's very, very common. So the fifth one is viral infection. And I remember when I saw this, I was like, there's no way that I have a, vir a viral infection. Like, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> I mean, there's something wrong with me, but viral infection seemed really intimidating to me. But as I looked more into it, um, I found that it's very, very common. And I don't want to overwhelm. I, you know, there's a lot of information on this. Um, but the specific viral infection that I speak of a lot is the Epstein-Barr virus. And it's just now, yep. uh, you know, coming in the surface and that. more and more people. Yes. So I think the statistics is like 90 to 95% of people have it. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So just open your <laughs> open your eyes to this because you may quite possibly have it. It is very common. You can pass it through saliva, um, you know, kissing. If you've had mono, you, in fact, have the Epstein-Barr virus. Um, mm -hmm. If you've had strep, you, mm -hmm. ha there, you have the Epstein-Barr virus. Um, and I'm just going to relate it back to my story because – you know, we, we go along thinking there's nothing wrong. And, you know, this, this infection can lie dormant in your body for years, decades. And what happens is puberty and um, even, and childbirth, these, this infection feeds off of your hormones. And so it's very common with moms to really feel the effects of the viral infection after they give birth. So, for instance, you know, depression being one of those symptoms. And then the sixth one would be electrolyte deficiency, and I'm not really going to go into that. Um, that kind of goes in hand in hand with, um, like, the liver issues that you may be having um, mm -hmm. From the heavy metals and toxins. So I just, I just make sure I get my coconut water for that. But um, the two main ones that I really, or actually, I don't want to say the two main ones, but I would say the most common would be the heavy metals and toxins. So cleansing your liver would be a huge thing. And then getting control of um, that viral infection. It doesn't, I don't want to scare you. Like it doesn't go away. You actually want to have like a little bit of it in your system so you don't contract like other um, strains of the Epstein-Barr virus, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I am assuming the work that you're doing, you're, you, these are like questionnaires or how do you, how do you figure all of this out? So I have a um, postpartum depression root cause assessment on my website. And you can, the, the link is, www.pp actually sorry scratch that <laughs> um the the link you can go to is kdeflores.com forward slash ppd root cause so you can go there take the quiz um you just mark down all the symptoms that you have and then tally it up and i give you um the key at the end so I'll, in terms of the common patterns and issues that you see, I'm assuming that that people have kind of gone through conventional routes or whatever route and they're they're not finding the answers or not getting relief in the ways that they wanted to or expected to. And so they're looking like to look deeper into to what else could be causing them to feel the way they do. Absolutely. I mean, there are times I've spoken to women who, you know, are on medication and they're, they're not feeling relief or, you know, maybe um, the side effects are just too much for them to bear. This is just, um, this kind of goes hand in hand. Like if you feel like you want to do something that you want to help it, you know, um, if you want to help recover a little bit faster, like this, this, um, you know, treating it naturally might make you feel a little bit better. So it sounds like a lot of what you're doing is is kind of also looking at the nutrition and and ways that people can add supportive foods into their diet that could help them feel better, obviously, I guess. 
and relieve some of these other symptoms that could be caused by uh, these root causes. Right. I mean, there's there's food that we eat in the standard American diet that I would not recommend to people, especially if you are dealing with any of these root causes, because they're actually feeding your sickness. So mm-hmm. it, it's a really hard thing. I mean, I wouldn't expect you to go raw vegan, you know, working with me. I really give you baby steps so that it feels doable. I mean, there's there's mm-hmm. a list uh, there's a list of foods. Um, I'll just go over a couple. Um, you know, dairy. Dairy's a huge one. Gluten. <laughs> like, I know that's going to freak a lot of people out, and it freaked me out at first. But you know, as a as a holistic health coach, like I meet I meet my clients where they're at in their journey. We're all in different parts of our journey. You know, some mm-hmm. people are vegan. Good for them. But other people, like, believe me, last year, I was, I was binging, I was binging on packaged cookies and cake and all this, like, I've had my issues. So I get, I really get the struggle that um, a lot of women go through when tweaking their diet. In, In terms of your healing process and what you found, what... What did you see? What were the differences that you noticed once you started implementing um, different diet changes and nutrition changes? Well, it's funny because I already I had to keep a list of these things because um, I've been doing this for about a year now, um, a year and a half. And so you kind of forget like how miserable you really were. So I, I have written a lot down. Um, I've had eczema since I was a teenager. And that's gone. Um, that's kind of unrelated, but related at the same time. It's it's unrelated to postpartum depression, but it has you know the same root cause. So I was not sleeping. <laughs> Even um, once my daughter started sleeping through the night, I still couldn't sleep. You know, I would make an excuse that I was on alert, like I was listening for her cries, but that, you know, at some point that's not the case anymore. And I still was not sleeping, but I am sleeping through the night now and I feel refreshed after a full night's sleep, where as a year ago, I literally felt like I was hit by a bus or I felt hungover. I have that restorative sleep now. And that's primarily that you're getting the restorative sleep through nutrition changes or or pattern changes? Yes. Yes. I don't have achy muscles anymore. I used to attribute that to co-sleeping and like not being able to adjust throughout the night in fear of waking her up. But once I started eating better and getting rid of um, some of those foods that were feeding my my virus and all that, I wasn't achy anymore. Cravings have decreased immensely. So, you know, even as a health coach last year, you know, those rules, quote unquote rules that everyone tells you, like they didn't mean anything to me. It was a response, like I needed soothing of some sort. And so I would just binge on ice cream and cookies and all that. Those are gone. I mean, I still have cravings, but I make much, much healthier choices. And I no longer, you know, blow up at silly things that my daughter does, like throwing a tantrum. I used to just, I would just yell, like I couldn't take it. I couldn't take the tantrums. And I notice I don't need as much alone time to cool off. I still give myself alone time, don't get me wrong. But I just, if I don't get it, I'm not, I'm not in a bad mood like I would have been, you know, months ago. Right. So uh, it sounds like a lot of the the things that you're suggesting are really, I mean, they're, they're like self-care based. You're really taking care of yourself and your body in a different way by kind of looking a little bit more closely at what's contributing to you feeling poorly. And even if, um, I'm thinking like in, for situations where like there are other factors at play, that's not, um, primarily nutrition based or some of the root cause based that, even doing these changes would be supportive um, in terms of just changing your nutrition and taking care of your body in a different way. And and I'm assuming then also trying to prioritize sleep and, Mm -hmm. and all of those things that pretty much everybody could benefit from. 
Well, and, and I didn't really mention it in the root causes um, as far as like the emotional, like traumatic loss and traumatic stress. But, you know, there are things happening in your brain when you experience that loss or stress, almost like a, a heat storm. And it kind of kills off these neurons and, and, you know, they're made up of magnesium and potassium and glucose and all that. So by, by, you know, practicing self-care nutritionally, that can even help you get, get help with your traumatic loss and traumatic stress. So it's, it's all it's related. very supportive. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So for the podcast that you do, what kinds of things are you focusing on there? Well, right now we have focused our first episodes on really figuring out what it means to have postpartum depression, what it means to have postpartum anxiety, PTSD, because postpartum depression is used as an umbrella term. So we want to empower you and ask questions to your doctor and really get to the bottom of it and not just think, that it is postpartum depression. Because I had that confusion too. And although I did have the depression, I also had the anxiety and I also had PTSD. So, you know, depression is just part of the answer for some people. It could be something more. So we're weeding through all the confusion there and we're talking everything from, you know, mindset to nutrition. And and I have... Um, my friend, Dr. Danielle Jenkins, um, she's a psychologist. We have her perspective on it too. And, you know, we don't often see that meshed, you know, the psychologist side and the nutrition side. So I'm just really excited to be able to talk about the two and really have people aware, aware of the, um, the issues that moms are dealing with, you know, after birth. All right, so this is one one piece of the puzzle, so to speak, in terms of people who are who are not able to find the help and support that they are looking for, or who have tried multiple things and it's not necessarily working, or want to use a supportive intervention to help with healing and recovery, uh, is to to change nutrition and really look at what what you're putting into your body. I always say that I go hand in hand with, you know, whatever psychologist, therapist you're seeing. Um, and I go hand in hand if, with your doctor, too. You know, it all works together to help in your recovery. So the podcast is new and people are going to be able to listen to it. And what is the name? Natural Postpartum Support Podcast. So what I'll do is I'll put all of um, websites and your podcast information and places where people can find you in the show notes. And if, if folks are interested in kind of understanding if they have some root cause issues like you were discussing, then they can find you there. Great. I thank you so much for coming on and sharing your experience and, and your perspective and the kind of support that you offer. Well, thank you for having me and um, allowing me the, this platform to be able to spread spread the awareness. Thank you again, Katie, for coming on and talking about your experience and your perspectives on how to help moms get through this period of time. If you guys would like to be connected with Katie, you can search for her on, you can go to her website, katieflores.com. She's also on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, And if you'd like to check out her new podcast, Natural Postpartum Support Podcast, you can do that as well. And all that information can be found on her website. For this and all episodes of Mom and Mind, please connect with us at momandmind.com where you can find links to all the platforms you like to listen on. And you can connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next time. Thank you for joining us today. Our hope is that you leave here feeling heard, understood, and hopeful. Please share this podcast. Together we can support moms and families so that no one has to deal with this alone. Come and connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at Mom and Mind.